everybody, Dave the Monkey here, it's time for Mel's Me Weekly, yeah, another Friday come round, come round fast, don't I, really fast, this is edition, wait for it, edition number nine, yeah, that many we've done, anyway, we've got another really good one for you this week, yeah, loads of things going on, loads of things, so sit comfortably, get ready for it all, first, we've got a slightly unusual celebrity hello, yeah, this is a local celebrity, Somebody who lived in the village for many, many years, used to run the shop, was chairman of the parish council, big per- the person in the community. We've got a big hello from, wait for it, from Jan Archer. Thank you, Jan. Now sit back, listen to this. It is nearly eight years since I went to Great Ayton and left my lovely cottage in Melson Bay. I keep in touch with the village through the village newsletter and the articles in the DNS Times. It is so pleasing to learn that you have a good community support system to look after the elderly and the disabled. These are times that we have never seen in our lifetime and I wish you well in your volunteer system and hope you stay at home and keep safe. Well, thank you, Jan. Thank you. You and Colin stay safe out there in Great Aiden, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Right. Now, has everybody in the village got their sunflower seeds this week? Yeah. Somebody went round delivering 10 sun- sunflower seeds to everybody. Should have got it in a little envelope with a little note of what to do with them. Because the village are having a competition. Yeah, a competition. So you get them planted. All right, here's a picture of me planting mine. Yeah, because I'm really excited about it. Really excited. Right, now something else I'm really excited about is this next item. Yeah, we've got a beautiful, and I mean beautiful, little song from Melody Henderson. Yeah, you sit back and listen to this. It is gorgeous. Down by the Sally Gardens, my love and I did meet. She passed the Sally Gardens with little snow white feet. She bid me take love easy. As the leaves grow on the trees But I, being young and foolish And now I'm full of tears Thank you, Melody. That was superb. You've got a really good singing voice. I think you might have got that from your mum and dad. Yeah, but well, that was brilliant. Send some more, Melody. That'd be really welcome. Right. I don't know if you can see this stone I've got here. Somebody, I don't know who, kindly put this on my front doorstep as a little thank you, I think, to Dave the Monkey and the Melsonby Weekly. Whoever it was, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Very much indeed. Right. Now, moving on, what we got next? Well, it's that time, yeah, it's that time we got the monthly draw. You know, the monthly draw for the sports day. Yeah, we raise money for the kids' sports day in the summer. Normally, the draw would take place in the best pub in the world, in the Black Bull Melsonby. But because it's closed, we're doing it online. And John and Sue Fenwick have done a little video for us of this month's draw. Right, here we go, John and Sue. Hi there everyone, it's time for April's 100 Club Draw. I've got the lovely John to help me again and uh, we've tried to make his a bit more glamorous this time. Okay, can you give me a hand John? No problem sir. There we go. Hello everyone, right we'll just give the uh, the numbers a really good shake up this morning. And the first number to come out of the Lucky Magic Bag is... 6 and 5, 65. 65 is Emma and Ian McClellan. Well done, the McClellans. And the second number is 15. And that is Gail and John Althwaite. Well done, the Althwaite. And the last and final number is 80. 80, and that is Janet and Pete Brown. That's excellent. Well done, everybody. We shall deliver all prizes this month and last month's in the next few days. 
enjoyed. And thank you. Are we finished now? Yeah, yeah, finished right, now. Okay. Cheers, thank you. Well done, well done to all the lucky winners. Fantastic. And well done to John and Sue for doing that video and doing the draw for us. Brilliant, brilliant. Right. Now, so we've had some winners. We've got a sunflower competition. And you probably know there's another competition going on to celebrate VE Day. We're having a village scarecrow competition. Yeah, scarecrow competition. Now, to tell you all about it, here's Christine Elliott. Go on, Christine. Tell us all about the scarecrows. Scarecrow, you, you might remember my great granddad. He was called Wurzel Gummidge, he was a famous scarecrow. So I've been asked to come on the telly, and you believe that, me on a telly, and, um, and tell you all about something that's happening um, this week in Massaby. So I'm so excited about this, I really is. So, so it's going to be a scarecrow competition. Oh my goodness. So all you people who's going to be living in houses, yeah, I, I don't live in a house, I, I used to live in the fields, and um, going to be making some scarecrows and putting them in your gardens. And you can decorate them any way you like. So you might want to do them um, red, white and blue. That'd be nice. That'd be nice scarecrows. Or maybe for VE day, that'd be a nice one too. Um, or what about key workers? That's a good idea and celebrate all the good work the key workers are doing. Yeah, so what we need is your scarecrow to be in your garden by next Friday. That's, that's the 8th of May, that's bank holiday. So, um, and then they're gonna get judged. And do you know what? Those nice people at the Black Bull, you know, Elaine and Ni Niall, they're gonna sponsor the trophy. So it's gonna be the Black Bull Scarecrow Competition Trophy. And, and the best one will win. And, and I'm not allowed to win because I'm already a scarecrow. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Never mind. Okay, so good luck, everybody. Oh, oh, I nearly forgot. If you do a scarecrow, you need to let that nice lady, uh, what's she called? Uh, Christine Elliot. You need to let her know. She's a lovely lady. Um, let her know that you've made a scarecrow. And then she'll know to come to your house with the judges and um, get you judged. Or get your scarecrow judged. Yeah. Sorry, did, did I do all right? Can't get my words a bit muddled up. I'm just not used to this. Thank you. Bye. Well, thank you, Christine. Thank you. Now, we're all going to take part in the scarecrow competition. You get ready. You get your scarecrows made. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. Now, you can probably see here, I'm getting ready for VE Day. Yeah, VE Day. 75 years since Victory Europe. 75 next Friday, Friday the 8th of May. Now, not only have we got the Scarecrow competition, but everybody we hope is going to be putting up bunting. Now, you see my bunting, I've got it out of the cupboard, and we're getting ready to put that up. So lots of bright colour bunting, lots of Union Jacks, yeah. And maybe people will have a little picnic in their garden to celebrate. Now, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? That'd be a good idea. Right, so let's all get ready to celebrate VE Day next Friday, 8th of May. Big day, everybody, big day. Right, what we got next? I'll tell you what we got next. We got dog training again. Yeah, the dog training. Sally Sayers, super duper dog training expert, has got another little trick for your doggies. Yeah, watch this. It's really good, really good. Thank you, Sally. Hello, Mouse and Bee. Today I'm going to show you how to teach your dog to walk backwards. So, Another 
trees. This time, when she walks backwards, I'm going to give her the word, which for me is away, that means I want you to walk backwards. Away. Good girl. So it might take you quite a long time to get to this point because walking backwards is something dogs don't tend to do very often. Um, so uh, you need to just build this up very, very slowly. But once your dog's really happy at walking backwards and they seem to understand the word, then you can bring in the mat. So, good girl. Uh, Indy knows the word mat and she knows she has to go and sit on it. So, the mat helps us to build up distance with this command. That's in you, come on. Away. Good girl. So you'll see that in your nose, she has to keep walking backwards until she feels the mat and her back feet. And sometimes she will also sit, uh, as that's what I've trained her to do. So if you want to build the distance up that your dog will walk backwards, very slowly just step away from the mat and carry on doing the same exercise. So in your turn. Away. Girl. And you will notice that I always go to her on the mat to give her the reward. So she really needs to have value for being on that mat. Right, so I think that's everything. So I hope you enjoy doing that. Just remember, do a little bit every day and your dog will learn to walk backwards. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. That was fantastic. I'll get my little friend Hattie to see if she can do it. I will. I'll give her a little go at that this week. Right. What have we got next? I'll tell you what we got next. I was just going to remind you, remind you all about Terry, Terry Sutton's Melsonby Music Book. Remember that? We talked about it a couple of weeks ago where we're going to all send in our favourite songs that mean something about this virus time. Our favourite songs. And Terry's putting together for us a Melsonby playlist or songbook, whatever you want to call it, right? Now, we've got loads of stuff already. Loads of people are sending some great songs. Yeah, some brilliant ones. Don't stand so close to me. Never walk alone. Uh, all songs like that. Brilliant songs. Now, if you've got any others, just send them on to me. And Terry's going to make up the songbook and playlist, okay? Which will be absolutely brilliant. Right, what do we got next? Now, it wouldn't be the weekly, would it? It wouldn't be the weekly unless we had... Gordon's jumping away! Come on, Gordon! Hello, Melson B. Welcome to another weekly Melson B with Dave the Monkey and the rest of the gang. Uh, here we are, still in lockdown. Well, anyway, a couple of little stories for you. Sort of forces related, given that we're, we're approaching VE Day. Um, when Bill, when, when Bill Nixon was in the army, he was a sergeant and he was out on manoeuvres one time with a company commander. And when they went to bed for the night, Bill said, sir, look up into the sky and tell me what you see. The commander said, I see millions of stars, Nixon. And Bill said, well, what does that tell you, sir? And the commander replied, well, astronomically, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. And theologically, it tells me that God is great and that we are small and insignificant. And metrologically, it tells me that we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. What does it tell you, Sergeant Nixon? And Bill said, well, sir, it tells me somebody's nicked our tent. Well, when I was in the army, the Sergeant Major growled at me one day. I didn't see you at camouflage training this morning, Private Angus. I said, well, thanks very much, sir. And then the chief commander of the RAF, he decided to personally recruit some new pilots. And he saw young twins from North Yorkshire. He looked at the first one and said, son, what skills can you bring to the Air Force? And the young man looked at him and said, I'm a pilot. The commander got all excited, turned to his aide and said, get him in today, all the paperwork done, everything, do it now. The aide hustled the young man off and the commander looked at the second twin and he asked, what skills can you bring to the Air Force? The twin said, I chop wood. The commander said, son, 
We don't need woodchoppers in the Air Force. What do you do and how do you know how to do it? The twin replied, I chop wood. Young man, huffed the commander, you're not listening to me. We don't need woodchoppers. This is the 21st century. Well, the twin said, you hired my brother. Of course we did, said the commander. He's a pilot. The twin rolled his eyes and said, so what? I have to chop the wood before he can pilot. Thanks, Nelson B. See you soon. Bye now. There you go then. That was brilliant, mate. Very funny, very funny. Gordon, in fact, was on last night. Yeah, he was on the uh, he was on the open mic, the virtual open mic from the Black Bull. Yeah, the Black Bull. The Black Bull Melsonby. Yeah, it was fantastic. Loads of people watching, loads of people singing. Thank you to Sean Henderson for organising that. It was a really good night. And keep your eyes and ears open for another one. Maybe one coming up soon, hopefully. Yeah. Right, now, what we got next? Now, loads of people in the village are doing loads of interesting things during this lockdown. And one of them is the Gibson family, Chris Gibson in particular, who, to help his dad, who's missing his golf, yeah, missing his golf, he's built a little mini golf course in his garden. Yeah, a little mini golf course. Amazing. You might have seen it already. It's been in a Northern Echo. Yeah, famous golf course now. Famous golf course. Right, have a little look at this video. It's really fun, really fun. Go on, Chris. And you join us here today for the Gibson Course Cup, looking out for who's going to come in first place. Quick overview of the course. Tee off from first, second along the back, and then back down to third here. Let's see how everyone does. So uh, here we have uh, Craig Gibson lining up for the first hole, part two. Ooh, just to the left of the green. Nicely avoided the obstacles here. Can he make this for par? Oh, and it's a par. Well done, Chris. Well done, mate. That was fantastic. Right. We, that's the end of this week, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. But you know what? We'll be back next week with more from the Melsonby Weekly. And if you've got anything you want to send through, any little videos, any little stories, any of you telling jokes or singing it up, send them through to me, Dave the Monkey, at Melsonby Weekly. See you all soon. Stay safe, everybody. All together now.